It was a beautiful Kansas spring Saturday. Gary traversing the highway northeast, the outdoor scenic province enhancing the 52-mile journey to the city of Wichita. His ambition, Century 2, the magnificent performing arts and convention center, a conception since 1969, an adulation for the city. Arriving at Century 2, finding street parking on the exhibition hall side of the sphere-shaped complex, the entrance area where the virtuosos of proficiency, the Wichita Symphony Orchestra conveyed the commodities of their trade. Making a circulate walk to the multiple door entrance, entering the foyer, the visitor from Anthony adorned in a suit and tie. The appropriate attire to coalesce with the patrician assemblage. A brief abeyance to secure an accommodation ticket, the usher directing him to his place of attainment to await the performance of the symphony orchestra. Gary being no stranger to the concert hall at Century 2, having attended several of the Wichita Symphony presentations, but being selective of the orchestra's concert series. The 2200 seating accommodation hall was filled to capacity, reasoning that it must be because of the featured guest artist, an opera tenor, his selections from Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart's, Don Giovanni. The performance that was about to begin and included a long admired composition by Richard Strauss is sweet from Der Rosenkavalier, the paramount reason for Gary's attendance. The other concert works were secondary, but still very much admired. The lights dimmed, the doors to remaining closed as was traditional for symphonic presentations, no one would be admitted during the performance, the melodic wondrous of a symphony orchestra began. The intermission finding many of the classical music patronage partaking of the champagne and wine selections available in the foyer annex, Gary reasoning it was a little early to indulge. A familiar figure approached, greeting Gary, Jay Jolly, the hospital administrator and his wife, Gary being conscious that Jay's wife Carol possessed a baccalaureate in music, and performed with the prestigious Wichita Grand Opera. The couple immediately mentioning the guest tenor's outstanding performance, noting the fact that Gary had traveled from Anthony for the special event. Gary asserting, he often attends the symphony programs, but finding it more discretionary not to give a more correct explanation of today's appearance, a predilection for Richard Strauss's Sir Rosenkavalier, sustaining his employer's augmented impressi, on of his classical musical edification. The sounds of the chimes announcing the culmination of the interlude, the concert once again to commence, with the performance concluding, on his return to Anthony Gary was somewhat convivial, accepting Jay's respective acknowledgement to his concert attendance and the perception presented. She was one of those individuals, when you saw her approaching in the hospital corridor, her expression would afford whether a person would greet her with a smile and a good morning, or remain silent, and pass on by. Dorothy Gorankowski, a somewhat elderly surgical nurse was responsible for supervising all aspects of the surgery department. It was her domain, the surgery suites, supply, and sterilization rooms, ruling with an iron fist. No one questioning her authority. Gary as plant services manager was responsible for acknowledging Dorothy's requests, his housekeeping department engaged in cleansing only the surgical suite scrub room, immediately after a surgery. The Dominion possessing surgical nurse preferring to wipe down and sterilize the operating rooms herself, followed by a requisition to rise the boiler pressure, enabling her to sterilize the surgical instrument in the steam-actuated autoclave, having them ready for another use. A morning encounter finding Dorothy halting Gary, requesting him to gown up, meaning scrubs, shoe covers, head covering, gloves and accompany her to surgery to examine the hospital's primary operating table. During her cleansing, 
having discovered an oily substance beneath it. Upon examination, the plant manager discovering drops of hydraulic fluid, apparently seeping from the area of the lift cylinder which raised and lowered the table. Gary concluding that the problem was serious, deciding to confront his longtime maintenance employee Roy Stein. Questioning him about the situation, Roy disclosing that it was brought to his attention in the past, and he had remedied the problem by applying a silicone adhesive to the leakage area. Gary immediately coming to a conclusion, Roy's solution was totally unacceptable, realizing not only an endangerment to a person undergoing surgery if the table were to unexpectedly lower during a surgery procedure, but also a possible legal liability. Conferring with Dorothy, discovering she had lobbied for a much needed updated table in the past, but because of budgetary restraints, her lobbying was to no avail. Gary giving her an assurance. He would resolve the problem. Taking it upon himself writing formal risk management report, documenting Dorothy's conversation and his findings, but after some forethought deciding not to follow protocol and wait on the safety committee. But handing the report directly to the administrator, Jay Jolly. Jay instructing Gary remedy the situation and get back to him. Gary discovering the table was purchased through a medical supply company in Colorado. Placing a call, then directed to the manufacturer for parts and service. The factory rep finding another liability question because of the age of the table, suggesting that the hospital might be better served to replace the table rather than incur the expense of parts in a service call only to find that it should be replaced. Gary relaying his findings, including the representative's suggested replacement. Jay deciding that expediency was important, deciding not to put the surgical table out for bids accepting the medical supply company's suggested replacement model. Dorothy getting a new surgical table and Gary new respect from Dorothy.